Hello, hello. Welcome to ELO Explained in Examples. I had a similar video on a different YouTube channel that I share with some friends for this Discord server, but I decided to remake this video for two reasons. Number one, my chair was squeaking super bad during the old video, and it was pretty distracting and annoying and taken away from the message. And number two, I didn't go into as much depth as I would have liked to have gone, and hopefully this new video rectifies both those errors and get, paints an accurate picture of the ELO system for all of you, so all of you can understand the mathematics behind common ranking systems of games like chess and, and online video games, and even some European soccer leagues use ELO, I believe. But I, didn't, I don't really know that for sure. So, ELO, contrary to popular belief, is not actually an acronym. It is named after the guy's last name. It was invented by Arpad Elo, and he was a mathematician and a chess master. And during his heyday, there was a lot of controversy as to how to rank certain chess players relative to each other. Obviously, the top of the top, you know who they are. But the middle of the pack, it's kind of hard to judge, and not everyone's at every tournament. So, you know, if one player does really good in one tournament, and he struggles in a different tournament, and there's different levels of playing strength in each of the two tournaments, and across several tournaments, like, how do you determine how strong a player actually is? So ELO intended to rectify this, and he, his idea was that performance is based on a normal distribution, that is a bell curve, centered around your ranking. So if you're ranking 1200, your performance in any given game would be based on a bell curve. It's like the distribution of your uh, performance rating in the game. Now several years went by, there was like some kind of back and forth as to uh, some criticisms. Um, and it was theorized that instead of a normal distribution, it was a logarithmic distribution that performance was based on, which is a bell curve but with thicker tails. So a little less consistency um, for each player and a little more highs and lows. So that's the overall theory behind the ELO system. And now I'm going to show you the, how the mathematics works here in Excel. So let's say we have two players, player A and player B. Player A is 1200, player B is 1106. The first thing you would do is you calculate their, their Q, so QA, QB, and it's Q of X here in, in uh, row four. And that is, you take the ELO, divide it by 400, and do 10 to that um, remain, or that quotient. So 1200 divided by 400 is three, 10 to the third is 1000, and that's QA. QB is 582. And then the expected score is the Q of that player divided by the sum of the Qs. So 0.63 is 1,000 divided by 1582, basically. And then, uh, obviously, you can see that they both add to 1. Now, the expected score is a win probability, but also in games with draws, it's the win probability plus one half the draw probability. So if we are looking at a game that doesn't have draws, then player A would have a 63% chance of winning. But if we're looking at a game such as chess that does have draws, the 63% is the win probability plus one half the draw probability. And there's in this mathematical formula, there's no exact way to determine how much of that is the win probability and how much of that is half the draw probability. Um, so uh, I've kind of pre-filled in the results here. So let's say player A won this game. A win is a one, a draw is 0.5, and a loss is zero. Um, so how you would like calculate the ELO difference is you take the result minus expected score and you multiply that by the K factor, which is 32, um, in lower ranking like chess. But I think for grandmasters they lower the K factor, so there's less like ELO adjustment for each game. Um, but K factor is basically like how like the scaling of your ELO. And I think like some of these websites like chess.com, lie chess, when you first play you can gain and lose a hundred hundreds of ELO and then you lose in like ten ELO if you lo you lose after you play like so many games. So I think the K factor like decreases as you play more games as to try to like stabilize around a rating range so you don't have to like grind all the way up uh, if you're like way or all the way down if you're like boosted. Like me. Um so this final ELO is just uh, the difference in the result minus the expected score times the K factor, and then player B loses the same amount of ELO. So it's a zero sum game, um, which one player gains in ELO, the other player loses. And if we change this to a draw, since, uh, since player A had a higher expected score, a draw benefits player B, and player B's ELO goes up a little bit, and player A's ELO goes down a little bit. 
and as you can see, if we flip this player B to like let's say fourteen hundred, um, you can see it goes the other way around because now player B is expected to win. And then the more we like scale, the more dramatic the ELO shift is, obviously. So like let's say let's say player B wins, there's basically no ELO shift, but if player A wins, huge upset, there's a huge ELO shift. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the limitations with this system, but first I wanted to kind of go into a performance rating, which USCF and FIDE kind of give each player performance rating, and that's like how your playing strength would be at a given tournament, at a given like isolated event. So let's check it out. On the left here is USCF. Let's say our opponents are uh, in column B here. There's our opponent's ratings, and our results are in column C. So we beat these first two. We lost the next three. And the performance rating is your wins minus losses times 400 plus the sum of the ratings. All of that divided by the number of games. And that gives you 994.6. That's how USCF does performance rating. FIDE does a little differently. They look at this table that I copied from Wikipedia. And this P is like your win probability. So here we win 2 out of 5 games. Our P is 0.4. We look at the 0.4 table. And that's minus 72. So you take the average of the ELOs of our opponents and subtract 72. And let's say we did really well. Let's say we also beat this person uh, and drew this person. Oops. That puts our P at 0.7. So then we would look at 0.7 plus 149. And then our performance rating would be the average of the ELOs plus 149. Okay. So that's basically a little overview of uh, math behind ELO and performance rating. Now, I be what I believe like USCF does is when your first tournament you get like a provisional rating. I believe that's performance rating, and then it like starts going like this. Um, but I don't know that for sure. I'm just speculating. So, a couple limitations on the ELO system. Number one is like you don't lose ELO if you don't play. So you can easily just protect your rating by not playing. And a lot of systems and games and governing bodies recognize this, so they have a minimum games requirement or like have ELO decay in some like online games um, to combat this. Another one is selecting opponents. If you believe an opponent is super boosted, you can get more ELO by beating them, so you'd rather play them than an op opponent who you think is super underrated because it's you know not worth the risk of losing too many ELO points. So like let's say, for example, that player B is rated 900 and player A is rated 1200 but player B is underrated and let's say they're the same strength but player B is underrated so win probability is a half a half okay but the expected score is 0.85 so it kind of is the odds are not in player A's favor because player B is underrated so I hope that makes sense as to uh, how like inaccurate ELOs can kind of cause players to um, be a little cautious about who they play. Another one is um, ELO inflation or deflation, and that is how the population's ELOs change over time. So, for example, we only had like one or two people over 2700 in the 90s in chess. Now there's a ton. So it seems like ELOs are going up. And that, so like it's really hard to compare ELOs over time. Like, are these 2700s better than Karpov and Kasparov? or not. It's hard to tell. Um, so that's just a brief overview of the ELO system. I hope you learned something and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.